I'm going to move over here to our yellow cozy corner and speak to you, Johan Niklasson. Welcome. Thank you. You're here today to give us an intro for our next track, Connect to Us. So to come closer to us, we wanted to learn about ourselves and what better way than through the data of Slack. How can we read the data and see how we feel and what we do? I think this is so fascinating. So please uh, tell me, why this passion for Slack? Yes, um, I really like Slack, not only because it's very easy to uh, get information and find answer or ask questions such as how do I log into the webcast, for example. Uh, but for me, it's also great because in Slack, you can actually, for me at least, you can write messages and kind of convey a feeling or emotion with the message you write, such as you, you we have these thousands of different emojis and reactions. If, and if you don't find an emoji that suits your needs, you can add it yourself. Uh, and you can also add images uh, and GIFs or GIFs for the people at home who say that. Um, and um, as someone working from home, this is great because I can actually convey some feelings out to my colleagues while talking to them over Slack. Um, and as a data-driven engineer, I love it because then I can actually, that enables me to kind of analyze this data because it's all digital. Nice, very good. So what about Slack? We're all using it. What sort of tool would you say it is for most Klarnauts? Um, it's uh, mostly a communication tool for most of the people that uh, work at Klarna, uh, but it's also a productivity tool. Uh, a lot of the engineering teams, uh, mine included, for example, um, have added bots or robots that let, lets us know if anything goes wrong, such as our services goes down. So we kind of get that information uh, directly in Slack. Mm. Nice. Is it only used for work? Not at all. Um, one of the most popular channels at uh, Slack is actually the Bad Jokes channel. Oh. Uh, and as you can imagine, people share bad jokes with each other there. But it's also a lot of fun images and other kind of humorous content. Mm. And I think it's actually the eighth most popular channel at, uh, at Slack which is kind of impressive. Um, and we also have the investing channel for people who like to talk economics and invest uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. um, pet pics, where people share pictures of their pets. Uh, we have gamers, for people who like to into gaming. And um, uh, sports and wellness, for example. Nice, cool. So um, you've, you've analyzed our Slack da data and you found some interesting patterns in it. So how is it possible to even read patterns from Slack? Um, first, you have to get uh, the data of Slack, and this is where our amazing productivity teams at Klarna comes in. Uh, they help me export all the public uh, message data from uh, Slack from 2019 till, till today. And I want to stress to the people uh, listening that I only have access to the public data, not the direct messages or private channels. So all your secrets are safe out there. Good. You don't have to worry. <laughs> Um, after that, um, uh, yeah, and even though it, it's only the public data, uh, it amounts for only about one tenth of all the communication in Slack. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, and even though that's two million messages that I've had to get my hands on and analyze. Wow. Yeah, and after that, um, we have to, I have to uh, apply certain tools or extract the data based on what I want to find. For instance, I can extract the emojis we use, I can uh, check the activity between different channels, or I can um, uh, look um, for when post messages uh, in Slack. And I wanted to see how does this differ from before the pandemic. Um, so I uh, wanted to see how is this, how are these patterns changed from before we started working from home and can we read anything from that? Right, interesting. Okay, well first give me some general data. Can you tell us some Klarna Slack facts? Ooh. Ooh, I, I, I kind of love that combo of words. Klarna Slack facts. Hmm. Oh, sorry. Please continue. <laughs> yes. Um, as many of you know, this is, uh, this is the exactly one year ago since we started working from home. Right. Uh, on the 11th of March 2020. And um, uh, actually the same week we started working from home, our Slack uh, usage actually doubled just within a couple of days. Wow. Uh, and that's just only continued to rise since then. And today we actually send over 200,000 messages per day. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. It's amazing. Uh, so, um... You mentioned emojis earlier. Uh, is there anything that we can read out of these emojis? Yes, I like to think so. Um, I try to see in what emojis we used before we started working from home or before the pandemic struck and try to see how this has changed during the last year. Mm -hmm. um, so I uh, got a list of all the emojis to see which one has been trending and which one has been dropped the most since, uh, since then. Interesting. Mm. So 
which ones have dropped and, and trend? Um, actually, the smooth emoji, you know, the kind of wobbling pudding we yeah. have. Um, mm -hmm. That one's been, drop, uh, been dropping the most, actually, uh, of the popular ones we use. And I like to think that, personally, for many people out there, 2020 or last year has been kind of rough and uh, have, hasn't really been as smooth as we hoped. So I like to think that we kind of stopped using the smooth emoji because, yeah, it wasn't just as smooth. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Pudding. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of smooth, of course, uh, I want to ask, do you have shares in Klarna? Yes, yes, I do. Yeah, you're in luck, because every time someone mentions the RSUs, RSUs or the stock information of mm -hmm. uh, Klarna in Slack, the rocket emoji just goes on flying. And oh, that's really? one of the reasons I think that's, uh, one, that's one of the most trending emojis uh, today, actually, during the last year. Hmm. And also the uh, raised hands emoji is also one of the most popular ones today, um, or been trending a lot as well. And I like to think that uh, even though it's kind of rough for everyone, we kind of still try to keep a mood up and, and support each other with, with emojis. Oh, I love that. That's, that's great. So um, is there something that we can read from our Slack data? Like, how are we feeling today? Yeah, sort of. Um, I have done some analysis where I, um, where I look at actual text that we write. Um, and um, it is possible to read some kind of positivity or negativity in, the, in what we write by looking at how often certain words occur, words with uh, kind of different positivity or negativity attached to them. An example of two words with the same meaning, uh, but different positivity, for example, are discuss and argue, which differs a lot, but mean the same thing, basically. Yeah. Um, and by, um, and by uh, looking how often these words occur in text, we can actually see um, um, how, how the positivity or happiness, I like to call it, has changed. And um, not unexpected, possibly, we could see that there's been a slight decline during the last year of positivity mm. um, in Slack um, and in the messages that write. But although this is just a public channel, so it's very possible that people are convey other feelings in private messages or in, uh, or in uh, private channels. Um, but what's really interesting to see uh, was uh, to put this kind of against each other uh, during weekdays. So before the pandemic started, which was quite surprising to me, actually, we could see that Monday was actually our happiest day. Really? Uh, yeah. And uh, this has now changed. Now it's actually Friday, which I would thought would be the case even before the pandemic. Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, Wednesday is clearly our saddest or least happy day, actually. Wednesdays? Yeah. Oh, OK. Well, um, so your colleague, Marcus Naslund, he had a talk at the conference at 2019 uh, about Slack and what he found from analyzing Slack. So have you done any follow-up on that? Yeah, uh, part of Marcus' talk uh, was about the social aspect of Slack, and, and that's really important for me as well. He looked uh, a lot about the activity in the Fika channel, for example, or Petpix, uh, and he could see that uh, cats were most shared on Tuesdays, oh. and Fika were most discussed, and uh, people talked a lot about it on Thursdays, actually. Hmm. Interesting. So would you say that Marcus's findings are still true today? Uh, yeah, uh, lots of them are. Uh, some things have changed, of course, uh, because of the current situation. Yep. Uh, we still like to share cat pictures on Tuesdays. That hasn't changed. Although the best days for Fika now isn't Thursdays, but actually Mondays and Fridays. Oh. Uh, and actually, the, the worst day for Fika, if you want to come to the office, is actually Wednesday. Oh. Uh, yeah, and as you might remember, Wednesday was also our least happy day. So is it coincidence? Well, I don't probably know. not. No, nope, probably not. So. No. <laughs> We're not liking Wednesdays. <laughs> All right. Um, so, um, was there anything that really surprised you when you went through all this data? Yeah, a lot of things. Uh, one of the most funny things or surprising things was a lot of the pet pics channel, where people share pictures of their pets mm -hmm. in the channel. Um, since the pandemic started, people uh, dogs has actually risen by twenty five percent, and cats has decreased by ten percent. Uh, not sure what to make out of it. People like dogs more now, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but something that really puzzled me that I still can't make out of is that um, um, uh, cats are mostly shared uh, in the morning and dogs are shared after lunch. And I want to take this moment while I'm here to actually reach out to people uh, that have pets and uh, come with your suggestions to me because I have no idea what to make out of this. So reach out to me, Slack, post your suggestions in the Klarna Connect channel because I'm, I'm sleepless right now. I need answers. Well, let's help you on sleep. Please reach out and let him know. <laughs> what are we thinking here? 
All right. Um, was there anything that concerned you with this analysis? Yeah. Um, while looking at the FIC activity, uh, activity in the FICA channel, mm. I could actually see that um, people share a lot less FICA now than before, and it's come quite natural. People aren't at the office, and it, it's actually decreased by 80%. Oh. Uh, and while there's a kind of fun, sentimental tone to it, there's also a bit of a serious aspect as well, because for many people at Klarna, FICA means socializing, mm. and less FICA means less socializing. Um, and I wasn't really ready to accept this answer, so I actually sent out a short survey to people at Klarna, uh, in, in Slack of course, uh, and just within one hour I had over 200 answers, which is another great reason why, Slack, why I like Slack so much. Right. And um, unfortunately the numbers match exactly, which was quite impressive, uh, but it's true that we actually eat less fika now than before. Um, and most people also seem to enjoy Fika more at the office than at home. Um, and one of the other questions I asked was uh, whether they do remote Fika or not, with mm -hmm. the teams uh, going to hangouts online and kind of socialize with the team and eat Fika. And only one third of the people who answered actually did that. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Well, so we, to sum it up, we really need to start having more Fika breaks. Um, we emoji support each other to keep our energies high, and and then that we're turning into dog people. Yeah, <laughs> is that exactly. a fair yeah. summary? Yeah, I, I would like wow. to think so, but please correct me if you if you have other opinions at home. Well, I, I think that's amazing. Yeah. So, um, do you have any personal advice for the people at home? Yeah, uh, of course, everyone uh, tackled the situation differently. But one thing that has worked really well for our team. Mm -hmm. Uh, while working from home is that every Wednesday we allocate uh, 20 to 30 minutes uh, where we have a remote fika with each other and we try to talk about anything but work basically. Um, and you, you don't really have to have an uh, actual fika, most of us brew a cup of coffee or tea mm. and then we kind of hang out and chat with each other, talk about what's going on on the weekend, uh, talk about games we're playing and other social aspects. Um, usually it goes down to we uh, play Among Us or Uno or Scribble together. And, oh, nice. Uh, yeah, and it's really fun. And that's a great way for me uh, to connect with my colleagues because we have fun together, we laugh, and we don't necessarily have to say too much, but we kind of still connect on that level. And I think that's great. That is fantastic. And virtually everything. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much, Yuan, for coming here. And this is such a perfect intro to our next track.